It's one of my favorite days of the week where I'm able to actually put my feet up and have genuine conversations with people from around the world. And today, I can actually say that we're actually going global today with our amazing guests. This is the Logistics Monk Show, where we aim to have conversations with people that not are about sales or not about what we kind of do productivity or the certain things that we always kind of see, right? And, you know, when I'm listening to different podcasts um, across from various amazing influencers, it's always kind of like the same message, right? Sometimes it's that personal development and it's to get you to that point. But my intention here on this show is to have conversations with different viewpoints from around the world, whether it be something, be we had amazing people who uh, dealt with cancer or people who are starting new businesses or people who are just going through life and they want to do better for themselves. And that's why you've come to the right show for that. Today, like I said, I'm extremely excited with all the guests that we do have, but I'm even more excited today. Um, when I do set, schedule these pre-chats with these amazing guests and get to know them, I always feel that I, I, I'm not interviewing guests or I'm not interviewing strangers. I feel like after the conversation, I'm like, hey, I'm just talking with a friend, you know, somebody that I haven't met in a long time and we're just grabbing a cup of coffee. And that's really our theme for the show is really dive deep and feel like you're grabbing a cup of coffee. So with that being said, I want to introduce our amazing guest this morning, uh, Laura Phelan. Uh, she is a therapeutic coach who just helps people. Um, one thing that I always kind of tell in, in our logistics and business atmosphere is that we can have all these titles, but when we have that ability to serve people and to the highest power, whether you believe in faith or not, but being able to truly serve people and be a devotee of everything that they're kind of going in life, then that's where we actually see success and that's where we win. thoroughly enjoyed our pre uh, chat that we had and getting to know about you, Laura. You. Um, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? How did you find your, yeah. yourself into the way that you are right now? Yeah, definitely. So I've been coaching for just over six years, I'd say. And I got into this world, this work, um, much like many of us, right, from my own, I guess, personal development, spiritual healing journey. But that actually went way back for me. So I was I guess I had my like dark night of the soul or first healing point when I was 13. I had an eating disorder. I was kind of rock bottom mental health and I was in school at that point. So I was introduced to therapy and the world of counseling, personal development and coaching and what it means to have to issues and your self belief literally from the age of 13 onwards. So I guess that gave me a real thirst, so to speak, for that work, because when you experience that so young, I think going into my teenage years slash adult years, I had a very different mindset, but I wanted my life. I knew what it was like to not have, you know, everything feeling so easy and what it felt like to not feel good in yourself. And I guess that work that I did to heal that made me really embark on a mission to help other people really thrive in themselves in their mindset in their self-image and just learn how to themselves and build their self-worth so that they don't have to go through those stages or when life does get hard they have the tools and know how to do that so that was kind of where my journey started almost my rock bottom was my really like turning point for all of the things I've now created in my life where I coach people one-to-one, -one. I run workshops, I have spoken all over the country and a little bit abroad, I've done a little bit of work with the media, and really just having that bigger picture for my life um, really brought, was born from that journey for me as a, as a really young girl. So as you mentioned, and I want to acknowledge that, I want the audience to understand it as well, right? Like Laura's journey started when she was 13 and, you know, she's still going up through um, her progress. And, you know, all, all of our stories are unwritten, um, obviously, yeah. from what we're kind of learning towards. What are some things that you would kind of talk to like 13 year old Laura um, that you've kind of learned mm. the lessons and the lessons that you're learning right now? Um, not to mm. necessarily change the path, because I truly believe um, I'm, I'm Hindu. So one of the things we talk about is karma. And, you know, our big thing is that, you know, yeah. you can't change the, project the trajectory of your life, really. It's kind yeah. of like, you know, the, every situation that happens in your life is for you and it's meant for you to happen. So what advice would you have in terms of like, you know, to get to where you are right now? Mm. I think it's trusting that what you're going through or moving through or what's challenging you is for a reason and it is for a greater purpose. And I think I'm mindful of how I say that with certain privileges that we obviously have in the world um, and 
you know, in terms of how I grew up. But at the same time, I really do know what it's like to experience severe mental health. You know, growing up, my mum used a food bank. She was a single parent. We experienced in the UK what that version of kind of living in somewhat of poverty feels like. And all of those things have shaped me into the person that I now am to, I guess, transmute and alchemize that. And that can be really difficult because when we're given a set of circumstances that feel particularly painful or damaging to how we feel about ourselves, it can really do one of two things. We can grow from it, which is the term post-traumatic growth that I really love to work with, or we can allow it to become the story of who we are. And I would say the biggest difference that I've learned from that 13 year old self is that that lies in my hands. You know, I had doctors and therapists and parents and all sorts of people around me saying, you need to do this. This is how you need to get better. Until I decided I wanted to get better, until I was willing to engage with the tools, nothing was going to change. So everything really does come from within. And I think that is like the biggest lesson I learned so early on that I try and give to my clients, my friends and myself when I'm moving through life challenges, right? It's in here that we seek that. It's inside. And I, I couldn't agree with that more, Laura, that, you know, it, it's, I, I've spoken with another person in the, in the, in the space and they've kind of mentioned like that inner child within you that you kind of yeah. grow with, within yourself. And it, it's kind of Absolutely. wanting to please that person because like when we kind of look at it, you think of a parent, like, as you mentioned, your mom, a single parent, yeah. you know, when your mom thinks about Laura you know she's probably envisioning the five-year-old or like the six-year-old you know or probably like crawling where you're like one or two and you know the the person that you are today when it comes to your your clients the people that you work with like as you mentioned before you've been abroad you've spoken at different events and if you, if anybody who's watching right now if you take a dig a uh, deep dive into Laura's like Instagram you'll see these amazing things that she does um where does that come from like you know being that person like you know a little bit you would say like for myself i'm pretty reserved but like i really want to do these things and i'm scared to do these things myself but like you said it comes from within do you care about what people think or anything like that where does that mindset come from mm. this is such a good question i've worked with a lot this year and working with a lot currently as i dive more into the space of i guess imposter syndrome and what it feels like to move through that for me it's not about eliminating fear it's not about eliminating and getting to the point where you're like, I never care what anyone thinks. I'm just going to do me because I don't think that's realistic. Like we're human beings and we do on some level desire, validation, acceptance and to be seen. The way I work with this is allow the fear and the discomfort to be there and learn how to move through it and show up anyway. That's the difference. We are all going to experience imposter syndrome, worrying what people think sometimes, not feeling good enough. But can you show up anyway? Can you recognize that that's a story and a set of beliefs and learn and show and prove to yourself that you're able to move through them? There are certain things that now don't feel as nervy to me. So, for example, like getting up on stage or doing a talk, I was given like 12 hours to do a talk for a banking corporate company in London. And that doesn't scare me anymore. Because I've done it so much. But at university, I speak in a group of 10 people on the subject I was studying with. So there is also, there is almost an element of feel the fear and do it anyway. Uh, you have to do things again and again and again for it to be comfortable for your nervous system to adjust. But it doesn't mean that I have every second of my life where I feel invincible and top of the world and always in that high vibe. It's allowing myself to still roll my sleeves up some days when I'm not feeling those things and do the thing anyway. Showing up for your future self and knowing that that's just being human. You know, those things are human but they do not need to become your story that stop you doing the things in your life that you know are going to bring you joy, fulfillment or serve others. And for me, when I come back to the serving and my purpose, that is when I'm able to move through that because it's bigger than me. It's not just about me. It's about the impact I can have by showing up in those moments. I love that so much. I, I, I love the theme, you know, we'll get, we'll get to imposter syndrome because that's what our theme is. But, you know, when we're talking about serving other people, one thing in my life, Laura, I, I'm working the sales industry in uh, logistics and my yeah. life changed when I went from, Hey, I need to make X amount this month 
Yeah. So I need to help these amount of people this month. And that's when I was able to like book more meetings and have more. And yeah. I've kind of learned like, you know, and you're probably seeing it as well, you know, like as you help people, you know, the world likes to, it, it, the universe likes to reward people like that. You know, it, it's, it's an yeah. abundance. Everything is out there for us. Um, I've got a question for you because you're talking about trust um, a little bit earlier on and I feel like a lot of people always kind of ask negativity trust, you know, like when was the last time you trusted somebody and it went wrong? But a question I have for you, yeah. um, have there been times in your life where you've extended trust to someone and it was actually rewarded positively? Do you, oh, is this just like a super open question as in like anyone or do you mean yeah. more in like the space of like personal development? Um, I, I would let's, let's whatever I love context. So whatever whatever comes to okay. mind with you, I like whatever that first thought is because I feel like anytime you ask somebody a question, it's like who's that person or something like that or that movie yeah. or that song. You always have that like, one like flicker right away, and they're like, okay, cool, I'm gonna yeah. run this one. So whatever cop pops into your mind, I'd love to to hear that. Many times, positively, many times, you know, and that can be as small as like meeting someone in a shared environment that says hey, I want to help support you to create this thing. So for example, yeah, I'll give you a good example. So I was, um, I live in a place called Brighton, the UK, which is like a seaside town. It's like the Venice of the UK, let's say, like the, the Santa Monica, let's, let's go with that. It's really cool. When the sun's out, it's amazing. And um, there's a really cool beach bar here. And I met the owner when I was out one night socializing. We connected after and I was like, hey, like you seem to really engage with a lot of what I post. And I noticed that you run events. Um, do you want to like set up a meeting? I'd love to do some work with you. The next week I went for a meeting and a drink with them. We sat down, we fleshed out some great ideas. I ran an event with them and I ended up meeting another person that ran another company that had the same and I'm now running events with them as well. And in that moment, it was really just it being open and it was trusting. It was trusting that that was, you know, and the right thing to do, that that person had good intentions and they did. And not everyone always does, obviously, but I think sometimes when you're a business owner, especially, a lot of it is chance and, and taking chances and taking leaps and taking risks. Like running a business is not for the faint hearted, right? Like we didn't get in this work because it's easy and comfortable and full of certainty. So definitely leaning into that trust when you know that that feels right or good or that collaboration or that connection is going to work for you go with it like why not what's the worst that could happen it's the worst that can happen and i always kind of mention that to people you know like go for it anytime somebody kind of comes to me with an idea or i go to somebody with yeah. an idea you know just just go with it you know what, what's what's the worst going to happen yeah. you know you can just never can kind of be afraid of anything and you know imposter syndrome i want to talk about that because you know we all face that and with you doing your one-on-one -on -one coaching and um, I'm, I'm gonna make an assumption here, but yeah. you know, some people might have that, that when they're bringing that into them and it's your job and you're kind of like your serving <laughs> point of view, sorry about that, to kind of get into there. But can you talk a little bit about what imposter syndrome looks like? Yeah. So imposter syndrome is really a sense of like, who am I to do that? Who am I to be in this space? Who am I to do the thing? And we all can experience it on a certain level. Like, I feel like I would experience imposter syndrome about being able to organize my flat more than I would experience it in, you know, being able to do a workshop or speak in front of hundreds of people or do something that maybe other people find daunting. So it is all relevant. But essentially with imposter syndrome, the thing that I get people to lean into is why not you? Like, if we look at, the world in like a wider picture really like lots of things have just been giving meanings and names and etc and it's like when you tell yourself you can't do something you're blocking yourself from even knowing if that's true or not right and it normally comes down to a set of beliefs that are around you don't feel worthy enough you don't feel deserving you may not feel qualified or experienced enough and that that can obviously have some relevance if i have a client that comes to me and they want to become a coach and they want to charge thousands of pounds for their first package and they've never coached someone, I might say, okay, that imposter syndrome is relevant because for you, you've not got the testimonials experience or confidence right now to hold that space. So we can work on that for years and they've got these incredible you know, experiences and under their belt, then I'll say to them, okay, this is a, a self-worth piece. This is a self-belief thing. 
So it can show up very literally and allow us to think about where we might need to make adjustments, but it often really shows up as a belief system, as a feeling of not being good enough and a feeling of like, who am I to do that thing? So I guess like my biggest thing that yeah, I get people to lean into is why not you? You don't do it, someone else is going to do it. If you don't do it, you're the only one that's going to feel disappointed at the end of the day. And I love that point of view. And I feel like that's going to work for, for certain, for some people, right, of, of the mm. population. When you, when you kind of bring up that, what do you advise for the people that when you do mention, hey, why not you? Why why not start this business? And they're like, well, they, they, they're kind of like, well, I, I don't know. They're still unsure at that point. Um, what is some, some what is kind of something that you, you kind of mentioned from there? So this is when we look at the foundations. Mm. So my ability to start a business would not have been there without the work that I did prior that as a 20 year old woman having gone through and it's funny as I'm saying this I'm piecing it together for myself having gone through years of therapy coaching personal development meant that as a 20 year old woman starting a business wasn't so much of a big deal because I had gone through that maybe a lot of people hadn't even begun to think about right so my foundations at that stage which were my relationship to self, my thoughts, my belief systems, were steadier than maybe someone that hadn't dealt in. So if someone's coming to me or you're listening to this and thinking that, I have friends that have really strong self-belief and self-worth, and they're also the people that if I said to them tomorrow, hey, do you want to like come and do this thing with me? They're like, hell yeah. And versus someone who has all the talent and all the skills and all the degrees, but because they don't feel good enough or they don't have those that belief system they'll be like oh no no I can't do that so that's when we need to look at your self-worth that's when those foundations become important imposter syndrome isn't just something that you have to live with it's something that is coming from a set of beliefs of who you are and how good you will be in said situation to not feel like you deserve to be there to feel like an imposter of that thing that makes sense Oh, hundred percent. And you know, what I love, Laura, that you mentioned was like, you know, you have friends that you can just be like, Hey, let's go do something completely brand new. And they're, they're down for the cause. And you know, when you talk about foundation, I think that is so important that you surround yourself with people that you really want to either be like, or use somebody you can kind of help, yeah. you know, kind of different levels in life. When you mention um, the one thing that like, like I really said, it was that, you know, you've gone through this throughout your whole life and people are able to kind of help when somebody is looking at that moments of like self doubt itself, mm. how can someone like remind themselves? Like, you know, I've gotten this far, you know, somebody who's like thinking like, Hey, I want to do a marathon run. And then they're discrediting the fact that they did a 5k, a 10k, a 15. They've done this already. So the next progression is there, but they need to remind themselves of those yeah. amazing feats that they've done. What is your advice towards something like that? Very practical steps, like evidence list. Have the evidence, like write that down. Write it down to look over, to look back on. Like actually sit in the energy of like, I did that thing. Oh my God, that time that I did that. Go back to that like version of you. I'd get people to meditate on it as well. Like connect with that part of yourself. I love doing things like getting people to write a letter to their past self, their future self. Connecting with the version of them that when you're in your everyday life running around busy, 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 we're not doing that. We're not connecting to the higher self or however you want to think of it. So you do actually often need to reconnect to those parts of you to reinstill that faith. And I would also get you to ask yourself, what did that version of you need at that moment? What did they do? What's the difference between that version of you and the version of you now? How did you move through that doubt before? Can you think back to that thing when you were like, I absolutely cannot get through this. You know, this is so hard. And that might relate to people that have had grief or heartbreak or, you know, their career fell apart, whatever it is. And at that moment, you've gone, I can't do this. My whole world is crumbling around me. It's never going to get better. And it did. Right. Going back to that, that simple thing of you thought it wouldn't get better. And it did. And just starting from that place, ask yourself, what's one thing I did to move the needle at that point in my life? What's one thing I did to help my mindset move forward at that point in my life? And then from there, you start to rebuild. I start to rebuild. I, I, and I can agree with that so much. And I don't know, uh, Laura, I don't know if you can agree with this or not, but I find that, you know, we people around us whether it be our partner our family our friends yeah. they view us high more higher than we actually do ourselves right oh, and, yeah and it's one of those oh, yeah. things from there as 
as that person, so think about like the, you know, as a friend or as a partner or as a family member, in what ways can we help with someone who's struggling with like their self-doubt and that imposter mm -hmm. syndrome being an ally for them? Mm -hmm. There's two ways to do this. Like there is definitely a place for you to be someone's cheerleader, their support system, reassure them. But I also think there's something really powerful about also becoming a mirror for someone to see it within themselves. Because what that then does is it enables them to see within them what you can without you constantly having to be the person feeding that. Because that's often where things like codependency come in and, and seeking that constant validation is also not healthy. Yeah. So it's like, how can you almost help mirror to them what they have within themselves so that when they feel like that they can remember what you said but it's more about them remembering what they've seen in you rather than them saying it to you i think there's something beautifully powerful and things that have really impacted me personally is when i feel very seen by someone and they may not have had to say the thing but they've seen something in me that i've been able to tap into so that's something that we can really do, help someone see their strength, help someone see their potential, help someone, you know, activate into their into their confidence. Um, holding space for someone and just exploring with them is such a, I guess, underrated thing. You don't always need to be the solver, the fixer, the yes. million solutions. You can really just help mirror it to someone. And I think that's what I strive to do as a coach, but as a friend as well. You know, it's like, how can we just allow that space to for that person to kind of get it from there? I love, I love this so much because I feel like it's human nature, Laura, for us to want to fix things or fix people. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's like we want to show them the solution rather than letting them figure that out. And one technique that I've learned um, that's helped my wife and I, uh, we've been married for four years. And anytime she kind of comes to a problem or I come to a problem with her, it's, hey, I ask her like a two prong question. It's like, hey, do you want to talk about this or do you want a distraction from it? And understanding, like, mm. when I can ask her and she gives me back, hey, I want to talk about... Love that you do that. Uh, well, it, it's, it's been really important because I feel like... Uh, I'll call a spade a spade, right? Like, me, my wife, and I being married, and then I kind of, like, take the mask and roll. I'm yeah. like, okay, well, I want to be the provider. Yeah. I want to be the protector. I want to be cool. all these, like, archaic uh, yeah, yeah, roles, yeah. you know, like that we've That's seen cool. from our parents and, and their generation as well. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, my God, if my wife is in a bad mood, I'm like, okay, I got to fix that. But it's like not understanding yeah. the why and kind of going and unraveling that for yourself. And I, I'm definitely sure you see that in like your workshops and, and seeing that with your one-on-one -on -one training. 100%. Um, what is something that you've you've kind of learned with that and kind of changed, maybe pivoted, maybe your thought process that you thought, hey, maybe a one plus one was two, mm -hmm. but now maybe let, let me look at a different equation. I think hugely like. Honestly, when I got into the coaching space, I was 22 years old. Like, I wanted to save everyone. I wanted to be, like, the martyr. <laughs> you know, I definitely, like, I'm a helper in my, you know, in Nanogram. Like, I am, like, all of the wanting to heal, help, save everyone. And I've really had to learn that, first of all, you can't save anyone. No one needs saving. I'm an enabler. I'm a mirror. I'm an activator. I'm there to support and help and guide. But I'm not there to anyone you know no one's broken first of all but it's been really really impactful for my personal relationships and my work to understand that you know um to really understand the role that that can have when you, you try and save people sometimes it's about stepping back and going you know am i making this about me and my stuff as well or how can i really show up for this person in the way that they need but also to what i can give we often overgive and overpour, and I and I don't think that this is just a female thing. But I think we see this a lot more in you know women roles because of all the kind of things that we can play, right? Whether it's like mothers or you know nurturers or whatever that is, and it's just learning that it has to come from an overflowing cup. It has to come from that place. Um, and like you said, like what you and your wife do together, that's so beautiful because. How often do you stop and ask someone, what do you need? Mm -hmm. A question I'll really try and ask with my friends is, what support can I offer right now? What do you need? And this is what I can offer you. And that's so hard as a coach to in your friendships. So like, you know, I live with someone at the moment and we have a beautiful relationship. But if I've had a day of like, 
holding lots of space and maybe you know holding space for myself certain conversations may need navigating around the boundaries that we have to then hold space for each other so asking people what they need but also allowing people to know what you can hold space for is really important and it allows you to communicate better it allows people to not feel rejected or take it personally and it just kind of allows you to meet like the human in them mm-hmm. like by showing them the human in you at the same time i love that i love that recurring theme of you know having that you got to pour from a from an overfull cup you know you can't pour from like a half empty cup because you got you got to really take care of yourself and i think with everybody that we kind of go on you know life is so fast paced right now you know we have yeah. so many things going on around us like for me like i personally don't watch the mainstream media because it's just like there's so much things that i can get attached to and not be a part of that i'm thinking about okay what does this do for me and i love that you said that you know you live with the you know with your living situation and you have somebody who you can basically have those conversations with and understand the boundaries and what that that was one thing that that i really took away from from what you just said was having that boundaries um yeah, coming absolutely. back to like the the self impot like being um you know feeling like you're, you're a bit of an imposter and things like yeah. that what boundaries do people need to set for themselves um whether it comes to family friends work life i think everyone's talking about work-life balance these days but are people truly mm. having them oh it's so funny because i literally i've had like so many of these conversations that you're asking me and obviously we didn't plan anything in this conversation so that's funny um it's actually it's, it's my birthday end of the week so i've got various family members coming to visit some that I'm like happier about, <laughs> let's be honest. And I honestly think that what I was discussing with a friend of mine is that sometimes the people closest to us are those we need the strongest boundaries with. And I think that something that I personally believe is that we hear the saying, you know, um, family of blood and, you know, da 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 da. And, and it's like, yeah, but you allow boundaries. <laughs> like, you are allowed to tell people what's comfortable for you or not. A lot of people in, I guess the coaching space or in this generation, I really see us as the cycle breakers, the pattern breakers, you know, we're healing generational wounds and things that were accepted for so, so long as okay. And I think it's important that you instill these boundaries with family members, especially views like, you know, it might be the roles that a woman and a man plays in your family or the idea that you have to want children or that you have to want to get married or that you have to do a certain job or whatever. And I come from an Irish background which is very, was very much, you live to work, to get married, to have babies, to live back on the farm. And I am literally like the polar opposite of all of those things right now in my life. And I kind of always have been. Um, it's a bit like, you know, in the Beauty and the Beast Bell when she's running around town and everyone's like thinking she's like this, this weirdo for wanting something different. Like that was kind of my upbringing. And I've had to have such strong boundaries. And that's been difficult it's not always been welcomed but it has allowed me to have peace (laughs) it's allowed my own healing it's allowed me to develop this career and this sense of self and it's okay to do that it's not selfish it's you you're born into what you're born into and this is still your life this is your path this is your mission you have choices I empathize with where that can feel difficult And I know that it's one of the most important things you can do for yourself is to have those boundaries. And everything you just said, you know, you you brought it back to what you said at the beginning, you know, this is your life. This is why not you, you know, if you want to live the life that you want to live, you know, you got to set those boundaries that you feel that it's not going to get you that same way. And my wife has talked about this. I don't know how it is like in the, in the UK and the Irish community uh, that you, that you're part of, but in the West Indian community, um, aunties, anytime you meet like an auntie or uncle, like their greeting would be like, Hey, you put on weight. Yeah. you know and then my wife were, yeah. and I were talking about that over the weekend yeah, we like you put on weight or something like that it's not a greeting yeah. you know it's not like, it's having those boundaries and correct where's your people. husband where's your kid where's this are you a yeah. teacher i've never never been a teacher but we'll go with that <laughs> you know like and when you're gonna get a normal job what, what was that thing that you're doing yeah all of that yeah and and and, you know, it's just understanding that. And I'm of the mindset of, you know, these people are older people and it's not my role to teach them. But my wife is oh, the opposite. She's like, no, no, okay. you correct it in that point of view. Oh. Let's let's talk about that a little bit. What, what are your Ooh. thoughts on something like that? I'm in the gray of that. Like, and I tell you why. If someone is open and receptive, absolutely. Like, give me, like, let me get inside. <laughs> like, you know, my mom, for example, super, super close, like, She has done therapy. She's open to difficult conversations about our upbringing and her upbringing and and what that meant. You know, I have a three-year-old brother. She had a baby much later in life. Like we've 
we've been through so much together she's so receptive and open and so I can do that and it doesn't drain me right I have other family members that it is like talking to a wall and I may have tried for a certain time and then I think there's a point where you have to drop it you you don't have to be the one to again kind of say change and you can't always someone has to want it like what I said about me as that 13 year old girl I had therapists doctors dietitians coming out of my ears I was still doing what the hell I wanted when they weren't looking I was 13 no mind people that have lived here for how many years on the earth and there's something really beautiful around acceptance of that for your own peace and knowing that you being the example and being the change is still impactful even if you can't change everyone around you you still get to be that and embody it you know um i did a breathwork ceremony last night and my message that came through was become it don't speak it like become it mm. don't speak it we're always speaking validation we're seeking more we seek this we seek that from others become it become it first and then allow that to ripple out I love that you said that because, you know, when one thing in business that we, we talk, I, I read about this quite a bit, Laura, is like, you know, if you really want to become a millionaire, become the millionaire and then talk about the struggles after, you know, mm. be, become that person that you want to emulate yourself. And, yeah. you know, as, as much as Alex Ramosi is somebody that I follow quite a bit and he kind of talks about, you know, like, you know, there's no daily affirmations, there's no meditation, there's no morning routine that's going to get you to doing the actual work and yeah. becoming the person that you need to become. You know, forget all that stuff. You know, they they asked him about his like his daily routine. He's like, I have none. I wake up and I go to work. You know, and that's that's what he does. And you know, I, I'm I'm a big believer when I tell people that because there is that balance. I believe that there's mindset. You know, there's that um, type of people who are like, you know, they'll listen to like their favorite music or something like that, mm -hmm. or they'll go for a walk. And and then if they're in sales and they're like, okay, I got to make that call, and then their hands are shaking, and then they they don't make that call at all. Right. So it's just like all those things build up to that certain point. And as you were mentioning about um, somebody, they forgot what they did. Make that list you were talking about. Um, yeah. I love when people are able. And, and by the way, I'm loving this conversation, by the way. You are awesome. And uh, this Likewise. is definitely thought provoking for me. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Um, I want to talk to you, talk about you as, as being a coach, because yeah. that is something that a lot of people aspire to be um, mm. and you definitely have all the testimonials when I was doing my research on everything okay. that you did I, I couldn't I couldn't find one bad thing about you so that, that means you're doing something really amazing um, what do you find the most rewarding part of being a coach just seeing people see the good in themselves like seeing them become it seeing them finally like be the person and live the life that like they can that they're worthy of and that looks different for everyone like i think what's really important is like for some of my clients that means just being able to look in the mirror for some clients like i had a client yesterday who's now a doctor she said a ted talk you know and she was like bulimic in my harley street office like on the floor um i have other clients that you know have finally met like the love of their life and had babies because they were blocking that because of how they felt about themselves it's different for every person it's helping them actualize a sense of self that enables them to then actualize the life that they want. Like, and you know, this is the martyr in me, but sometimes I do think like, if I could genuinely leave every single person I meet better off than my family, and especially my clients, I feel like I'd be good. I feel like I'd be good because that is, that's my greatest dream. That's my greatest vision. And I think that that's what helps me want to show up for this work all the time, you know, like, just seeing people see the goodness in them is just so rewarding because so many people live in pain and being able to help them through that and then just create even bigger lives than they ever thought possible, whatever that means to them, is just like the most special rewarding thing in the world. And, and, you know, you're helping people get to their highest level. And I love exactly what you yeah. just said there. You know, you're helping people get to love and be a rewarding coach. Um, for you, Laura, you know, are you at a point that, you know, you're you're happy with everything that's going on with you? Are you, do you love yourself right now? Is that something that what you've kind of learned? I know you talk about the overflow. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I do. And I think what I want to give real truth and honor this question loving yourself doesn't always mean that life feels amazing or that you feel amazing 
there are things in my life that I still am working to change, to evolve, that I'm letting go of, that I desire. But I have deep gratitude and deep fulfillment for my life right now that I've created, even though it currently looks completely different to how I thought it was 12 months ago. You know, and that's that's a helpful truth, I think, for people to know and understand about me is that I say all this stuff and I am embodying it because my life is not a life I thought I'd have a year ago, but I have still managed to find a level of fulfillment and joy and love for myself throughout that journey because I have kept stepping into that becoming and into making the best out of where I am right now. You know, and I think that that's really, really important, like self-love and true self-love is doing the things for yourself, especially when it's hard, especially when it doesn't feel easy to. It's doing those things and it's continuing them when things are good, right? So some people, like you said about your friend, may not need a morning routine. For me, the way I live my life and the micro things, the way I eat, the way I sleep, the way I speak, matter so much to how I feel in me. And so no matter what's going on in my life, those things are a non-negotiable. Like I'm a dragon without my things because I know it allows me to have that self-love, that self-respect. And I guess that self-efficacy to keep moving through whatever's coming. So there's the, the humanness in that is that nothing in my life is ever particularly always easy or pick perfect but it is something that brings me great joy, fulfillment, and yeah, it just feels rewarding all the time because I'm allowing it to be. And I'm allowing myself to keep, I guess, alchemizing it into what I desire at that moment for me. I love that. And I want the audience to really, really take in that point because I think that for me is probably like the, so far in our amazing conversation has been the big viewpoint, which is like, you know, life a fulfilling life and a happy life to me doesn't always mean that you know it's going to be all roses it's not i don't know if you've seen the new barbie movie but yeah. it's not gonna be like barbie where they're having you know every every day is amazing and stuff like that it's it's going to be doing those things that you know you don't want to do and this morning um when i was at the gym laura yeah. i was listening to the ed Milet show and the yeah. episode that he was talking about was like they asked him a question where it was you know I saw an influencer or slash a coach. He he said that, um, you know, I, I'm not having a good day, so I'm just going to stay in bed all day. And do you agree with this or not? And Ed said, you know, I, I don't agree with that because it's you're not showing up for yourself and you're lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. And he kind of put in the portrayal of like, hey, let's say if you said that you're going to take your mom or your dad to an appointment and you canceled on them. You know, saying that you're not, you're, you just don't want to go anymore, but you know, it's a very important medical appointment or you decide one day, hey, I don't want to pick up the kids from work uh, from school today. You know, you're not going to do those things. You're not going to let those people down. And mm. the big thing that he he mentioned, um, Laura, was that, you know, ships don't sink because the water around them. Ships sink because the water that you let inside them. Mm. Right. And then you kind of go down to service level and things like that. Mm, and yeah. for me, that I, I love that you said that. Um, Any, any thoughts um, that, that, that come to mind with, with something like that? You know, I had this experience a couple of months ago myself. And, you know, being a woman, for women listening, we know that hormones play a role in this. And what I'll often say to yourself is, give yourself what you need in that moment, but show up for your future self at the same time. If you're having a really bad day and you need a minute, take a minute, take an hour, take some time to like feel through your shit. Because what we also don't want is you going into a meeting or showing up for the thing from a place where you can't actually give or serve. Because that's not right either. Like. If you've just found out something horrific about your family, for example, maybe not taking the coaching call because you can't show up and hold space is important, but that's also about doing your job well and having that respect for yourself. Versus something difficult happens, but you're able to give yourself a few hours that day, but then know that doing the thing, whether it is you know, showing up for that meeting, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's cooking yourself that amazing meal, whether it's still connecting with that friend that you desperately want to cancel with, but that you know will re-nourish you, that is then showing up for your future self. So there's definitely space for both, but it is really important to not get into a space of allowing yourself to just live in the energy of the now, because obviously you will then keep repeating that energy. And that's again, where that thing of like self-love is showing up for your future self. I've like, I've had a post that I've been writing on this and it's like the difference between toxic positivity but showing up with love, very different. It's not 
don't feel your feelings, put on a brave face, pretend it didn't happen. It's feel your stuff, deal with your stuff, make space for it, and then show up in the way that's going to benefit you in your future and actually going to, you know, raise your energy, like raise your sense of like self-love and respect in that moment. And it's learning how to do that for yourself. Like you could call that reparenting or big sistering or whatever you want. So you've got to learn to, I think, how that looks for you and learn to definitely start putting that to practice because some some of the times when I've done that, I've had the best outcomes in my business and my life. You know, and it, going up and, and it comes back to everything you said. No, and it comes back to everything you said. You know, yeah. it really comes within. One big problem that... Uh, you, that I find a lot of people, especially the younger generation is kind yeah. of facing right now, Laura, is that, you know, that social media, you know, that dopamine drip, yeah. you know, that like, you know, posts that are uh, getting those likes, getting those comments and yeah, finding, yeah. trying to find their self-worth to that. Um, what are your thoughts on some of that? Because like for myself, I feel like, you know, you can post something and not be your authentic self and like, oh my God, I got the likes, I got all that stuff. And then you look at, you look at your time and you're like, oh my God, I didn't have enough hours in the day. But then when you go to settings and you check screen time on your iPhone, you spent like seven or eight hours on your phone, right? Just scrolling mm -hmm. through TikTok, just scrolling through Instagram. Um, where do you find that balance? Intention is everything. Intention. So I'll often say to my friends, I'll be honest with you, if I didn't have, if Instagram wasn't part of my work, I probably wouldn't really be on it because it doesn't give me a huge sense of like joy these days. I think there are other platforms that I prefer. But also being a creator and a business owner and using Instagram has also meant that I have to use it intentionally. Because if I allow myself to go on that platform and scroll and scroll and scroll for hours and then I have to show up and post for my authentic voice, my authentic voice is going to be full of other people's voices. So in order to, for me to use that tool effectively and show up, I have to manage how I'm using it. And I am not saying that social media isn't problematic because it is in many ways but I'm really big on getting people to actually discern between that and their own personal responsibility of how much time they use on it. Like, if you don't like something, you don't have to engage, click, like, save. You don't have to do that. You can delete it, you can come off it, you can follow other people. You have that power. I think we give a lot of power over to these channels in terms of like, you know, you wake up in the morning, you go on it for two hours and you hate the world. No one told you to go on your phone, read a book. And, I like, and I'm just being honest, and I know that a lot of people are have, you know, discussions with friends over this, but it's true. There has to be a level of self-responsibility. I know that we want the world to change overnight, but why don't you focus on being the change? Why are you expecting everything else around you to, to start working differently when you're not working differently? Like, within. That's where it comes from. And, you know, <laughs> you, you bring up a great point because, like, there's one thing that I don't understand, Laura, like how anybody could really be, like, cyberbullied. For me, it's just, like, if I'm ever being cyberbullied, just turn off the computer or just go away or just mm -hmm. block them. Or it's just, like, you know, like, for me, I just don't understand that that point of view of that people are facing. But people are facing it, right? I'm not I'm not everybody. And that's what makes this world unique and yeah. have those great things. Um, you have an amazing event coming up at the end of the month that I was taking a look at. Yeah. And can you talk to the audience a little bit about, about uh, what, what that exactly is coming up? I believe it's a full uh, full moon um, retreat. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I have assistant. many events. So do you, okay, mean, sorry. do you mean my women's uh, circle? Your women's circle, yeah. Around the full moon. Yeah, so I run yeah. monthly circles here in Brighton um, under the full moon because I've got a few different events coming up. That's why I was like, I don't know which one. Um, but really, that is like a very unfiltered, raw, open space guided by myself and a friend who's a hypnobirthing coach, where we gather women together in that space to show up exactly as they are, but move through a journey that allows them to tap into the higher self, the highest wisdom, to let go of what they need to let go that's not serving them, to process emotions and to start manifesting and building things that they want in them like in their lives and getting really honest with themselves. What I really like to do in any spaces that I hold is not skip corners. I don't like to bypass. I want to know like what is going on for you in all the ways. I don't want to know like the surface or the thing on top. I want to know what's going on beneath that because that's how we create change. And I started yes. to actually build more spaces to men and women because this isn't just a thing for women, right? Um, that that's within all of us but yeah it's really a beautiful space to come as you are get really honest about where you are and then move through what needs to be moved through to get to where you want to be 
I guess is the essence of that. But we also have things like meditation, visualization, card pulling, journaling that goes into the, the tool side of that as well. I love that. That is so cool. I, I wish we had some in Toronto. Maybe that needs to be another collaboration uh, that, yeah, that you do in the, cool. in the future. So like, it'd be awesome. And, you know, you mentioned that people being able to be on their authentic selves and, and talk through these things. And, and, you know, it doesn't just be from female, from a, a man's point mm -hmm. of view as well. I think it's, it, it's spectacular. So I can't thank you enough. This has been so much fun. I, I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed our conversation. If there's the, or people in the audience, they definitely want to connect with you. They want to book that one-on-one -on -one call and they're, they're feeling that, you know, you've hit on some of the points that they're going through in their life right now. Yeah. How can people get a hold of you? Laura? Definitely come follow me on Instagram. Even though I'm telling you not to always use it, if you follow the right people, it's good. So I'm sure it'll be in the show notes, but come and follow me there. You can also then go on my LinkedIn, look at my website, my current events. Send me a DM, you know, if, if you've resonated with this, you can apply to work with me through my bio as well. And, but yeah, I just love to connect with you. So if anything resonates or you think there's something I could support you with, then I guess don't be shy and reach out says, because why not you, right? There we go. And that, that's, I feel like that'll be the title of the show. So last question I always ask everybody, but I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to, I'm going to ask you a question, but it's kind of like a little bit of a hook that I kind of got in here. Let's just six smoke show. So Laura, what is a question that you wish that I asked you today? Ooh, question I wish that I asked you. Hmm. We covered so much. Um, maybe like, greatest desire for my life or like greatest like most uninhibited dream for the world mm, you know what i usually hook that to have people come on later on but i'm interested i'm i'm you, you pique my interest here i, really? I want to know what uh -huh. yes i want i want to know this yeah well it's funny because i asked my questions my friends this on sunday and like mine was quite vast but um i feel like my greatest vision for my life is to, well, quite literally live in two places at once, but split my year somewhere hot, so I'm there all the year. Um, but really make sure that, like, everyone in the world at some level has access to, like, healing and support and connection and whatever that looks like for them, ensuring that they have access to that because knowing the power of that and the change and the good that it can do, for me, is just, like, so infinite. So... That would be my greatest desire and wish for myself and the planet. You know, it's coming back to always serving, you know, as you yeah. kind of mentioned throughout the team. So thank you again, Laura. Uh, we're thank looking you. forward to seeing all the, I wish you all the amazing luck and all the blessings in the future of everything Likewise. that you do. Obviously, you know, you've been so successful with everything you're doing and just looking forward to seeing your journey unfold. Thank, thank you so much. You. Thank you so much.